Hey guys, thanks for being here. I really appreciate you joining me live today. Let me know when you get in the chat. Say hello. Let me know how I sound. I can't tell if I sound okay. Um, I'm trying to open a I'm trying to open a chat window here, but I can't seem to do it. Two viewers, let me know who you are. I really appreciate you being here. You've joined me in a live chat, and I really appreciate it. I'm going to bring you a small haul. Uh, I'm going to also do a QA and a at the very end and just kind of give you a, an overview of what I do on eBay. I've been getting a few questions on, you know, people having bad luck with their sales and um, what exactly they should sell and things like that. So I was going to address that as well. And uh, so, yeah, I really appreciate you being here on a Saturday. As you know, I will be live. I hope you know that you'll be, I will be live between 12 and 1 o'clock it's looking like 12 30 likes me a lot better than than 12 sharp for some reason i'm no cinderella but i just cannot do that 12 <laughs> try as i may and i really do try to get it here at the right time but i've always got to do something else to prepare for it so so glad you're here natasha thank you so much for being here i really appreciate it. if you are new to the channel please subscribe to the channel so that you can get notifications of when i do go live and of my new videos I do have some upcoming videos I want to tell you about of course I'm gonna whoops there went my bag I wanted to show you that bag too Hold up. all right here it is I'll put it up here um, I did want to do a few videos this week on of course the book haul that I told you about because I had that really expensive book that sold uh, whether it's listed for a thousand dollars, which I know sounds ridiculous. Believe me. I know and I've had other books that have been well, actually one other book That had that huge price on it and somebody said that you know, that's crazy I don't know how, how that happens sure enough. It never sold for that price But there are only three available of this price and believe me people do sell books for 500 and up It's it's not that rare. So I'm just holding on to it I do want to bring you that haul this week But I also wanted to show you a few other things that I've got in the magazine realm because magazines are super easy to find, especially at um, garage sales. At garage sales, they just about give them away. Please forgive me for drinking, but I really get a, th a dry throat. For you guys that are joining me, i got four viewers so far. Thank you again for being here. I guess we'll start with the haul. I did do a little bit of a haul, uh, a little bit of thrifting this week because... I was looking for something in particular. I was looking for a suitcase. My husband went on a bike run and he needed a big duffel bag because my daughter borrowed his and so forth and so on. And that's kind of what I always do with luggage. I just go buy it at the thrift store and then I redonate it. I just don't have room for it. Sheila, how are you? Thank you so much for being here. I don't have room for it. I buy it so cheap at the thrift stores that, you know, I'm able to uh, to just redonate it. I bought one for $4. So anyway, I went into Goodwill. And uh, I found a few things there. One of the things I found, I was really happy to find these. I thought these were so cute. And I did get them with my discount for about $3. They were marked five. I thought they were so cute. They, are, they, still, they still even have their bulb working. So I was really happy about that. I love the way they look like studio lights. They have a really cute aesthetic. I think they're darling. And look, they are adjustable. And uh, I'm going to use these in my other room where I do my videos because I had some really nice mid-century lamps in there. And I got them for $4 a piece and I sold them for $200 to someone in California. So believe me, I was I was happy to get money for those. Um, I had bought them for about $4 each, but I had bought them at different thrift stores, different years. They were like two years apart. And then when I found the second one, I was so happy and I had them on top of my piano and they would help with my lighting over there. Even though, believe me, it was not the best lighting. People always complained about my lighting. But I'm going to see how these work. I think these will be nice, especially since you can adjust them. I don't know. I have some other lighting in here that my husband brought me so I think it's working okay in here I really like it in here but I hate moving that lamp that he brought me 
all the way over there. It's kind of heavy. And, um, you know, I want to be ready to just do my haul videos over there, my big, large haul videos over there. And then have these. So I thought this was a really great deal. I don't know if they're old or not. They look like it because look how well made they are. They've got the little rubber stoppers there or the, you know, the little grip buttons there, whatever you call it. I think I think they might be uh, vintage. I don't know. You can kind of tell. Not vintage, but maybe 80s or 70s. I think they're pretty cool. And then they've got the little switch as well. That's always convenient. So I was happy with that. And then I found a mug, a Starbucks. And I had to look at this. I thought it was Christmas at first. But it's got the Starbucks on the side there. And then it's got sort of an almost a obscure heart design. So this would be good for Valentine's. And I have sold mugs for Valentine's, guys. Believe me. Uh, this one is, what was this, 49 cents? Uh, very, very good condition. Doesn't even look like it was used. So definitely pick up some of those Starbucks mugs. They don't all sell. Not all cities sell. The city mugs, not all of them sell. Kind of the first issue ones are the different ones. You can look up sold on and the comps on eBay, you know, from the highest to the lowest um, as far as pricing. And you'll see some of them that, that sell really, really well. The highest one I sold was not even sold on eBay. It was sold on Amazon, and it was the Komodo Dragon one in the black. And that took about a year sitting up on Amazon, used as well, not in a box or anything, just a used mug, and that sold for $75. And again, I had picked it up. I never pay more than $3 for a mug. My average price is a dollar, even $0.25 cents from a garage sale. And... Um, I've been lucky enough that the, our Goodwill next door, look how pretty that design is, I hope you saw it. Our Goodwill, my next door one, well actually all of them, have really reduced their prices on on mugs. So that's exciting. Sheila and, thank you, I really like those lamps as well, Sheila, I think they're really cute. Um, if you have a question, guys, I'm going to address it in a little while. Can you put it in a uh, like a couple of question marks in the front and then in the back is hopefully we'll get some more viewers in and we'll get some more questions and then that way it doesn't get lost. All right, another thing I found, let's see. I went looking because my, my as you know, or maybe you don't follow baseball, but our baseball team won the World Series. We're so excited. Oh my goodness, we just can't stop buying merch. But <laughs> I'd already bought that shirt that's back there. I bought that a couple of weeks ago and I wore it when my, when I had my live auction, but I I had another intention with that shirt. I'm actually going to use it in a crafty way, and I'll show you that when I do it because I just loved it. I love the way it says Hustle Town, and it kind of goes with my reselling jargon and everything, so I really like that. But my son told me, hey, the Sports Illustrated that predicted the win, the 2015 issue, I believe it is, is going for $500 on Amazon. No, I did not find it, but I went hunting <laughs> He says, so go look at your thrift stores, and I, and I believe you, I'm going to be going to garage sales as well to look for it, because um, the closest that I got, though, was this Dodger Summer Camp. This is Sports Illustrated for Kids, and this has the Dodger pitcher that pitched against us and lost. Kershaw, Kershaw I believe, is his name. So that was the closest I got, and I just thought it would be a nice read for me, so I got it. Maybe it'll sell. I don't know. There's, a, believe me, some fanatics out there that will pay anything for it. For their memorabilia then I got I wanted to show you the uh, kinds of magazines to look for this is a 10 year old magazine and it's a uh, Selena and I just my daughter just sent me a link to the celebration she just got put into the um, Hollywood walk so um, the walk of fame or whatever that is the, the star on in Hollywood so she just got hers and it seems like her fame is growing exponentially by year every year she just gets more and more popular I have sold quite a few items of her with her image on them a, a leather koozie sold for $75 a snapback hat that I found buried in the bottom of a bunch of other snapbacks that the guy didn't even know he had it I guess because when he saw it, he's like oh Selena like he thought you know maybe I should have put a price on it I got it for like two dollars and I sold that for close to a hundred dollars as well so look for magazines like this with this kind of subject matter that's that's um, you know just interesting and in, it, it incrementally gets more and more popular it really does I got that one now this one is a more recent one it is in Spanish 
And um, I think this one's about four or five years old. But again, I could lock these up and, you know, make a cool at least probably $50 for these. And I think I have the time. I have all of the ones that appeared when the tragedy first occurred as well. But this is like an anniversary issue from Texas Monthly. So, hey, Diana Salazar, how are you? Hi, Mike. Thank you for being here. I appreciate it. Guys, be sure to hit the thumbs up button when you walk in the door, please. And um, if you like the video, if you learn anything from the video when I'm done, please comment when this is over so we can keep this live stream video kind of vital in the, in the, uh, in the search. So come back and leave a comment. Let me know what you thought about this or that. And, uh, and of course, I appreciate your comments here in the, uh, in the chat. Now, this is something that I found at the Goodwill. This is from the 1930s. And I have so shown this a few times in my book hauls. Just to reiterate that there is, value, there is valuable items out there. Magazines are worth a lot of money if you've got the right one. Even half-price books. I don't know if you guys have half-price books. But even they have started to sell their vintage magazines for a good $20 to $30. And I'm talking, you know, the 60s life magazines and things like that. I'm so obsessed with this book. It has the most interesting pictures. I mean, just amazing. They're all black and white. Again, this is the 1932 or 33 issue of Architectural Digest. I do have it listed. I think it's selling for, I think, a little over $100. Not as much as I thought it would sell for, but it's listed up there. Again, guys, thank you so much for excusing my drinking, but I really do get a, a dry throat when I go live. I seem to get a little nervous. I'm sorry. Diana. Hey, Marcy. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Penny. Oh, good, Penny. I'm so glad you're here. Um, okay, so that's one magazine. This one is another one. Oh, I was going to tell you the one that did sell for me on Amazon, one of the first ones that got me hooked on selling magazines as well, is the premier issue of Martha Stewart. Now, take caution with Martha Stewart. Her books, even if they're old, they're, it's, it's a saturated market in her books. They don't really do that well. I would prefer finding a stack of her magazines. They do really well. Even the, even the ones like from the 80s and 90s um, go for good $20 on eBay, especially around uh, Thanksgiving. Her special issues like Thanksgiving and Halloween. If you know someone who collects magazines, go hit them up. All right, here's another magazine that I've got. I just wanted to um, kind of read this subject matter because I, I don't want to put a downer on it, but this one is um, Who's Coaching Your Kid? And it just talks about, um, I guess, molesters and that kind of thing. It's a very disturbing subject. I took a whole course on child abuse. So I'm always trying to educate people about, you know, the fact that 99% of perpetrators or, you know, 99% of child molester, the incidents of child molesting occur from someone that your child will know, either as a teacher, a coach, or, um, you know, a, a clergyman or whatever. So that's why I just wanted to read this and see what their statistics, but it, it really doesn't change. And unfortunately, this is a terrible, terrible fact, but I just picked that up from my own reading. And, you know, it just kind of, I'm always taken aback by people who say, oh, you know, it's um, stranger danger or on the internet or so forth and so on. And 99% of the people that do this horrific thing is someone that you know they ingratiate themselves to your family and your you know your community and that's how they get away with it so anyway i got that all right let's see who else just joined us in the chat um i think it's marcy and mike and diana thank you so much for being here guys i really appreciate it again i wanted to talk about the things that they've been asking me in my q a well, not in my Q&A videos. If you want to ask me a question, please do. But in another video, someone asked me about uh, or mentioned I'm not having any luck with what I'm putting out there. I don't know, um, you know, what, what to sell or what to do. Well, my only advice to her was to sell what you know. Because if you don't know the item, and believe me, I've made that mistake. I have wanted to, everything I see somebody else selling, I want to sell it. Not everything, but I'm, you know, electronics. People are making big bucks on electronics. I don't know how to test them. I don't know what's going on with them, so I'm not going to touch them, even though I find them at a giveaway price. At garage sales, they're going to cost me time and money 
to uh, research the product, to test the product, to have someone else who knows a little bit more about it test the product. So that's a waste of my time. I'm not going to do that. I've always loved fashion and luxury items, so I kind of gravitate towards that. Now I used to gravitate towards that just to buy it and consume it and use it and you know buy clothes for my daughter and handbags and so forth. And then I got to the point where I saw people selling that, right? And I wanted to do that. I thought that was a great, a great um, income stream there. So I, I thought, well, I know fashion. I know uh, brand names. I know uh, authentic handbag when I see it. So I can do that. But if I didn't, I wouldn't have done it because I'd be wasting my time. If you live in, in you know, flip-flops and, and yoga pants and you could care less about a brand name or a, brand, or a designer label, why pretend that you can go pick out some item and try to flip it when you won't even recognize it if you see it? That's kind of a waste of time, right? So um, that's the only advice I can get give you is to sell what you know. If you love books, sell books. If you love toys, oh my gosh, the toy market is amazing. But people have to know what they're talking about too. I know a lot about toys and sell a lot of toys on Amazon because I had four children who grew up in the 80s and the 90s. So I, I know how to do that. Now I'd have to research something from the 60s and you know the Hot Wheel market and all of that if I wanted to do that. There was the and then every time there's a trend in, in a movie, you know, I'll go and, and research that and what's going on with that. The Transformer movie. Every time that comes out, I pull out the Transformer stuff I have. Harry Potter wanes as well. Sometimes it sells really well, sometimes it doesn't. But I always pick it up anyway. So that kind of stuff, you know, is is what you need to depend on what you know, what you can find in your area as well. I live in Houston, I a huge metropolis. I have probably twenty thrift stores just in my maybe ten mile radius. On the way to work, I I, I have even more. On the way back from work, you know, I stop because I have a strew, uh, you know, of um, a slew of rather a, a slew of stores to go to stop so that's that's my advantage now other people may not have that some people actually only have garage sales but garage sales are great if you like to do that if you like to spend your time riding around looking for those bargains that are there and are only there for garage sales there's some things you will never find you know anywhere else like i said these magazines might be more more abundant in a garage sale than they are in a thrift store i had to go to half price books to look for these magazines but that's a good hunting ground for for magazines and books so that's the only advice I can give about that is to sell what you know and and what you have access to and the very first thing I tell anybody who has ever walked into one of my videos and wondered about reselling is to look around all of my books behind me they're listed everything behind me is listed these little boxes of uh, caboodles I had thought about listing them I bought them because they were selling really well but they didn't sell well enough for me to have to, sh to ship. It wasn't going to cover my shipping costs and they served me better to store my rubber stamps and my jewelry and all of that. So I wound up not selling that. But almost everything that's that's in my home has been has been listed. It, it, even clothes. Sometimes I'll find some fabulous clothes and I'll if it's worn and not new with tags, I'll wear it a couple of times and then I'll sell it. Same thing with handbags. That's what I do. But my point was to sell what you already have. Don't go out and source and get into a bind about how much money you need to spend. You don't need to. When I tried to teach someone the other day, well, not the other day, but a few months ago, she told she told me, "Well, I don't, I don't have the money to go buy anything. I mean, I just, I don't have, I, I, you know, I'm a little short on funds." I said, "Why do you have to go buy it? Go look in your closet. Go look in your in your husband's closet. Go look in the garage. There's tons of stuff you can sell right there and then." So, hey, pretty bookworm, how are you? Pretty bookworm, I love that name. Thank you so so much for being here. Let me show you the last thing, the thing that fell, that I hauled. What did I do with it? It's right here a minute ago. Here it is. Okay, it is a handbag. Another tip, guys, because I did promise you tips, didn't I? And I've talked about this before. Another tip about buying handbags, designer bags, or any kind of bag. I mean, you can sell Fossil. You can sell Dooney and Burke. You can sell Nine West. People just want quality bags sometimes they just want a pink bag you don't know what they want i found bags that are made out of plastic that have sold for tons of money i've sold a fish i'd like love to talk about this one i think it was a lunch bag i don't know but it was a, a fish shaped like a fish i mean it was, there was a bidding war going on with it on ebay but i found this one i offered her a hundred dollars off 
of what she was asking for. Now, my intention was, since it was used, to to actually see what it to actually use it and see if it was going to be for me because I kind of like the style. I love the little satchel. This is a Louis Vuitton. This is the mini linen, and it is linen, and it's got a very understated logo. I really like it. I also like the fact that she said it was green, sort of a khaki green. So I do like that color a lot. And um, the pictures were, were amazing. She had really good pictures on it. She really packaged it nicely too, I'll have to say. That I appreciate when people do that. I really do. She packaged it nicely. She put it in a nice box. Very, very nice inside and everything. Pockets in the back. And I wasn't afraid. My point here is don't be afraid to be called a low baller. Don't be a low baller. Don't, you know, I still, I think, offered her a reasonable price. I saved $100, but she still made some good money on this buy, right? So don't ever be afraid to do that, especially on Poshmark and on eBay, if they do have a best offer. But you'd be surprised. You know, sometimes I'll get on a binge and I'll, I'll just start offering $100, $50, $75 less for something that I want to buy, either to resell or keep. And, I mean, it's like sending out birthday invitations, right? They tell you to send out double what you think is going to show up, right? So you send out 50 and maybe 25 people will come, come to the party. That's exactly what I feel about best offers. So I did get it for $100 off, like I said. Try and... Um, use that option don't be afraid to use ebay as a sourcing venue it really is a great place especially if you do it late at night when people have you know decided to end their their auction look for auctions if they decided to end their auction late at night you can go in there and snipe it you really can or you can ask for for a, a better deal i've gotten a thousand dollars taken off one handbag that i have as well you just never know if they're going to say yes or no. So if you don't ask, you're not going to get it, right? You re you really have to ask for it. Hey, Marcy, how are you? Oh, pen ink. I'll, I'll address your question in just a minute. That's a great question about pen. If anybody has any um, suggestions for her, she wants to know how to get pen ink out of leather. Now, um, it depends on the color of leather, I would say. If it was... Uh, really really light I don't know if I would try maybe maybe a little eraser I, that's what I like to do with mine I'll do a pencil eraser on it and I would test it first because if it's in an obvious place you don't want to do it there but you might go behind the strap or something and try it like that any other questions guys I'd really be happy to, to hear them at the end of the, the video put a question mark or put all caps or something so I can see it anyway guys there was a little disappointment here she described it as excellent condition. It looked excellent. It really did. She showed everything except the straps. And I couldn't tell that the straps are a little dingy. So my point is, again, I may have to return it. I don't know. You tell me. Do you think I should try to resell it since I did save $100 on it? Try to resell it. Try to clean it. What do you think I should do? Let me know in the comments as well. When you come back, please come back, guys, and watch the video or leave a comment because it's really important that people kind of learn as well from the comment section. I don't know about you, but I do that a lot. Before I watch a video, I go to the comment section and see what it's about and see if it's worth watching. But anyway, I think that's really important to uh, to keep the video alive. But, um, yeah, well, the point with the description is don't use hyperbole. Another tip, don't use hyperbole to describe your items unless it really is in excellent condition. There's no reason for you to say it's an excellent condition. It's not an excellent condition if the if the straps are dingy. It really isn't. So um, that's just another thing I wanted to, to hit on is that keep your descriptions honest. Don't let your buyer be surprised. That is the last thing they want to do is get an item and then have to find something like that. I don't know. I still don't know if I'm going to keep it or not. It is a fabulous bag. I do love this fabric. I don't know if you can see it. They say it's linen and some other kind of blend. I love the understated logo. I really, really do. But I don't. And then this is fabric trimmed in leather, right? So with this fabric, I just don't know how I'm going to be able to clean it without it being, you know, obvious that there's a stain there. 
this chair is really driving me crazy with that noise. All right, so um, that's that's another tip there. Don't use hyperbole to describe. Make them uh, actually be surprised in a pleasant way. Deliver quality items. Don't tell me that it's that it's in excellent condition when in reality it's actually got some stains on the strap. You know, and that way you avoid returns because something like this, it's going to cost everybody money to send it back it's going to cost me a pain to have to go return it print another label even though i'm going to probably get my all my money back that's fine but you've, you've wasted my time and i just i think that's just really bad so anyway guys if you are new to the channel please hit the like button please hit the subscribe button there's also a bell there that if you click that you can get notifications when i go live and uh you will get notifications of my new videos as well and like i said i am going to do a haul video because not only am I going to show you all those books that I uh, talked about, I also already sold two of those books that I showed you in my last book haul. So, I mean, they sold within a week. I was super excited about them. They were one of them it was the genre that I always talk about, which is business and uh, in industrial psychology and that kind of thing. And the other one was the ethnic study book. So they both sold for the price that I listed at. I was so excited. Uh, and then I'm going to do a sales video too. I have one that's pending. All right. So, yeah, Diana, I think I think I should return it. I'm not sure because then I'm going to wind up pretty much getting back what I invested, right? Why well, go through that trouble with the handbag? Well, I asked a question about the handbag. Should I return it? Should I keep it? Since I did get $100 off, I offered her $100 less. She took it. And I feel bad. Believe me, I do, especially when she packaged it so nicely and gave me a really nice card and put it in a nice box and everything. But Again, it's business. I wanted to either enjoy it or resell it or both. And it's just going to make it harder for me to resell it. So that's why I'm upset about that. But anyway, back to that question about the ink on the leather. I would be very, very careful with it. I would try it with a, a pencil eraser first. I wouldn't use the magic eraser, even though some people swear by that. I might try the magic eraser, but again, just in a really hidden part of the purse where nobody else can see it unless they really look at it, test it there first. Now, I know that the, the hairspray trick works really well on fabric. That that even works on suede. I, I used that on a, someone had returned a Louis Vuitton, one of my Louis Vuittons that was lined in red, and it was that ultra suede, and she said it had an ink stain in it, and I could swear that it did not because because I just I just know it didn't but anyway she brought it back and um, she sent it back and I did try that one of my subscribers gave me that tip and that really I was amazed that it worked then I resold it again and the person was very happy with it and uh, so all was well there excuse me so anyway guys I believe that was all I was going to talk to you about today again I don't want to keep you too long on these live videos unless you want me to answer some questions but I do want you to come back and leave comments and uh, let me know what you think about the the things that we talked about today let me know if you've had any magazines that have really sold for you I know that uh, things on hobbies like horse um, horse training for race horses or any kind of equestrian those kind of things really work as well we talked about the old Martha Stewart magazines those sell really well but if you can think of anything else, come back and leave it in the comments as well so that this live chat that goes away can be enjoyed as well. Let me check the chat for questions, guys. By the way, can you all hear me okay and everything? There's no echo, right? Do you list books on Amazon or eBay? I have several old magazines. Not sure how to price. Okay, Sheila, well, let me tell you. You can look it up on eBay. If you have a barcode on the back of the magazine, this one is a free magazine, so it doesn't have one. But most magazines will have a barcode, or you can just take a picture of the entire cover. On the Amazon app, the seller app now, you can do it on the other one too, but the seller app has a, a scan option, but it also has a picture option. So I'm sure most of you guys have seen it but it's right here in the corner oh I forgot to show you the animal house I just looked it up on on uh, Amazon you see the little camera at the top that one if you hit that little camera it will take a picture of whatever it is you're holding 
here's another thing that was in my haul. It was another copy of Animal House. Because it doesn't really sell for much. Uh, a lot of VHSs do sell for a lot on Amazon. But this one doesn't. This is a great movie. This one says it's a new version of it. My daughter, I just gave her a, a VHS TV that has everything on it. And she's really been enjoying watching all these old movies that we have on VHS. And again, they do sell, though. If you find some obscure titles, you know, B movies, Godzilla movies from Japan, things like that sell for big money on eBay. But, yeah, I mostly sell my books on Amazon because they're so easy to just scan up and list. And a few things. I used to sell some children's books on eBay, but I just found it very tedious. In, and it seems like the bar scanner on on ebay does not work for me i don't know why every time i put it up maybe once has it actually found the item otherwise it's always like not listed or not available or something it's always got a glitch on it what luck have y'all had with that scanner on ebay does anybody use the the scanner on ebay on the ebay seller apps because it does not work for me every time i've tried it whether it's whether it's with a barcode i don't think it has the picture one though but it doesn't work it just doesn't bring it up People also asked me on my last book haul whether I sold FBA or uh, Merchant Fulfilled, and I sell Merchant Fulfilled. I have a collection of stuff I was going to send into to FBA, excuse me, and then I heard, you know, the the big downfall of everyone getting out of not everyone, but a lot of people getting out of FBA because of the the storage fees. The person that I mentioned before, Picking Profits, he's still doing books. He does FBA, but he is always talking about how that really threw a wrench into his business. But, of course, like most people that are smart, they will diversify. So he's doing other things besides books. He's doing clothing. He does really well with luxury um, items for men, suits and coats and that kind of thing. So, But he his major part of his business was fba books and he had i think he still does some but he's a lot more picky about it and then he does a lot of things where he goes to book sales and he can get books for 25 cents so so he manages to do that but yeah e ebay is not as lucrative for me in books not only because i don't list them as much other people do other people swear by ebay but it is a lot more trouble to me it's just so much easier to do that barcode do that that picture recognition thing and it's done so yeah let me see if there's any other questions thank you guys so much for being here be sure and hit the thumbs up for me I really appreciate it very much okay pet okay yeah I think I will return the bag pretty bookwormy I think so everybody's voting to return it I think so I, it's kind of irksome when you get something that you know you weren't told about even though, you know, the pros and cons, yes, I did get $100 off, but I thought I was getting $100 off on an excellent condition handbag. So we live and learn, right? We learn not to use that kind of language. I do describe things as excellent. I really do. If they are, if they are excellent and not dirty and, you know, whatnot. But if they're not, don't, don't use that word loosely. It really can't come back to haunt you. All right. Well, I think that's going to, be it, guys, unless you have another 13 viewers are here. Thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate you joining me. I hope to come every Saturday. As long as you keep coming in to see me and to talk to me, I will be here. I really, really enjoy the live chat. I enjoy the, the interaction between us. Um, I gave you the tip about the magazine, the bolo, to be looking out for the 2015 Sports Illustrated with the prediction. I think I got into it. Maybe I, maybe I started rambling. Let me mention it again. The Sports Illustrated 2015 issue with the Astro on the front, and it predicted that they would win the World Series. That one is going for $500 on eBay, and I am praying that I find it very soon. But um, we'll see. <laughs> but that's really all I wanted to talk about was that, and not to use hyperbole, what kinds of things to sell sell what you know sell what you have sell what you can get and don't put yourself in debt to start making money please i mean if we wanted to do that we'd be selling mary Kay and all that other stuff though people are very successful at mary Kay. the people that work it i know some people that are still doing mary Kay, and they're really really good at it but if you don't have the money to invest up front don't do it you don't have to so Anyway, guys, I guess I'm going to let you go. Thank you so much for being here. I'm going to try to make 
really good use of my Saturday. I actually had Friday off as well. Our school district called off the day, and we had the entire day off to go see the Astro Parade, to go see our Astros come in on their Victory Parade. I believe there was over 200,000 people downtown. I was going to go, but then I didn't get my mother to go with me, who's the real Astros fan. She's been She's been an Astros fan since they started, and so she could not go with me. She had a doctor appointment, and I kind of got like, like if you know, if you can't really go with the person that really, really wants to be there, it just wasn't going to be something I wanted to do. So I didn't get to go, but I enjoyed my day off. But today is kind of like my my day to, to get busy and list, and um, that's what I'm going to do. Again, um, come back and see me again. Please subscribe. Please hit the like button. Please hit the notification bell. Give me some suggestions on what kind of videos you want to see. If you have any other questions that you thought of in the in the interim of this video going um, not being live, please do so in the comment section. If you have any other questions or comments, please do that as well. And I'll see you then next week, I hope, at uh, between 12 and 1 o'clock. All right, we'll see you then. Bye-bye.